This is Josh Runquist here for the Heavy to Briefings YouTube channel for another edition of Out Today and What I Missed, this time for September 13th, 2024. We got a massive 15 albums this week, 7 that are out today, 8 I've missed along the way, so no more dilly dilly, let's get into it. First up, we have Flotsam and Jetsam with I Am The Weapon. This is the band's 16th studio album in 38 years, and that's quite the feat. But Flotsam and Jetsam has been one of the most consistent bands in the thrash genre to keep putting out al albums every two to three years usually. But especially starting in the late 2000s into the 2010s, Flotsam and Jetsam really found their signature sound for what they would still be today, and I Am The Weapon is no exception. It's full throttle thrash with the the occasional mid-tempo stomper, but never letting up on the intensity or the catchiness for that matter. Case in point, if you enjoyed the last several albums, you're gonna love this one. It has everything you're looking for with just the occasional twist to make it stand out from different albums. Check this one out and you'll see that a band that's on their 40th year as a band is still rocking just as hard as when they made Doomsday for the Deceiver. Next up, we have Helivorn with the Spectres. And if I pronounce that wrong, I am terribly sorry, but I really do want to show this album off in the best light, as it is one of the best melodic death doom albums of 2024. It's been 19 years since their debut LP, and they've only gotten better with age. Every subsequent album has been getting better than the next, and I can easily say this is the band's best album to date. It's that perfect blend of death doom, melodic doom, melodic death, Death, and just the right amount of dark atmosphere in emotionally draining moments. It's exactly what you're looking for in Melodic Death Doom. Adds some great dynamics and of course their authenticity behind it. And again, you have one of the best Melodic Death Doom albums of 2024. Next up, we have Ice Alert with Wounds of Desolation. This Greek black metal band is back for their third album and it's their most soul ripping album to date. Their songwriting is that classic melodic black metal sound that I love so very much. If you dig the lights of Rotting Christ, Dissection, or even a band like Gorgoroth, you're gonna find something to appreciate here. It's pure black metal in its most authentic form. And the production style is raw, yet very clear. I'm so glad that they didn't fall into the early 90s black metal tropes here. But add all of that combined with some great melody and harmony to make this stand out, and you have one fantastic mellow black album. Next up, we have Night Wraith with Divergence. When you think of Metal Death and Metal Black, you mainly think of the coldest parts of Scandinavia, right? Usually Norway, Sweden, Finland. You don't normally think of Denver, but the third album from this Colorado outfit is some of the best Metal Black and Metal Death that I've heard this year. Featuring past and present members of In the Company of Serpents, Primitive Man, and Ashen Horde, the band takes all of their influences and starts to add some other stuff that you wouldn't necessarily expect. You'll hear the likes of Dissection, Insomnium, even some November's Doom, and even some Nightingale. You combine all that into a blender, you get the, one of the best Mellow Black, Mellow Death, and I dare say progressive Doom Metal albums of 2024. Might sound like a weird combination, but trust me, check this one out and you'll be pleasantly surprised. Next up, we have Treldom with their return album, By the Shadows. Of all the bands to make their comeback in 2024, I did not expect Gull's avant-garde experimental black metal band to be that band. But when I listen to this, it really does feel like the band never left. Granted, it is updated just enough on the production side, and they have a new drummer in Kenneth Capstad. But everything that you're looking for in this very unique style is here in spades. Gull does a magnificent job with the songwriting and everything that he's looking for in this style, and if you like this adventurous side of the band, it feels like Treldom never left. I still advise going in with some caution, but if this sounds like it could be your bag, grab a goblet of wine, say, Satan, and enjoy. Next, we got Victory with Circle of Life. Victory is back with their 12th album, and it's that signature blend of German melodic metal and heavy hard rock that you've always known them for over the past near 40 years. It's super catchy, the production is stellar, every song on this album feels like it should be heard in the live setting. It's the perfect soundtrack for having a good time. Put this thing on at a heavy themed party, and everyone will be singing along no matter the age. Sometimes you just need an album to help you escape the realities of life, to despite the fact this album does cover the realities of life, but it's also the kind of album that'll put a smile on your face when you hear it. And if you need that smile, put this one on. 
And finally, for brand new stuff out today, it is Winterfelleth with what I consider to be the best atmospheric black metal album of 2024, The Imperious Horizon. Winterfelleth has never let me down, and after four years of waiting since their previous album, the band is back with their eighth and arguably their best album to date. Every time I spin this one, it just gets better. I hear more of the dynamics, I hear the layers every time being peeled back, and I'm able to enjoy this more and more from so many different levels. It's a very dense album when you peel back those layers though it becomes one of the most rich and rewarding listening experiences in black metal in 2024 and of course my biggest reason i love winter Felleth is not just the songwriting but the production style many bands of this style will go in a very raw early 90s black metal feel winter Felleth makes sure that their albums are the most pristine that you can possibly hear them at i love this album and it's going to rank so very very high in my top 100 check it out now and understand why and now for everything I missed along the way, starting with the progressive rock band Anubis with their brand new album, The Unforgivable. This Australian band's seventh album in 15 years feels like it's the culmination of everything they've been working up to for this point. It's just a fantastic blend of prog, atmospheric rock, just the right amount of alternative, and such a great dynamic sound. Whether it gets whisper quiet or it gets bombastic, you will hear those dynamics and it will blow you away. My favorite aspect of this album is the vocal delivery, but that doesn't mean that the rest of the band don't have their moments to shine, as everyone does throughout this entire album. If you like indie, you like hard rock, radio rock, prog, alternative, all of that, you're going to find something to really appreciate about this album, so give it a shot. Next up, we have the kings of instrumental post-rock, God is an Astronaut, with their brand new album, Embers. The band is back with their 12th album, and 22 years since that debut album, and Embers feels like it's some of the most inspired work that they've done to date. It feels like a new fire, well, no pun intended, but it feels like a new fire's been lit under the band for this one. The heavier sections are heavier, the arrangements are more fluid and interesting and full of left turns. It is more than worthy of the album title. When it gets hot, it's hot. When it dies down, it feels so subdued and chilling. And then when they do that left turn, it'll suck you in all over again. God is an Astronaut are the masters of post-rock for a reason, and Ember is here to prove in 2024 they are still at the top of their game. And if you've never checked out instrumental post-rock before, this might be the album that you should check out first to see if it's for you. Next up is the Hazy Tones with Wild Fever. And before I get into the interview, please go check out my mystery unboxing of this particular vinyl right here on the Heavy Debriefing's YouTube channel. It should be the previous video that you see. But that said, this is some fantastic stoner rock, psychedelic rock, and hard rock, all the way from Quebec, and it's everything that I love in this genre. It's not just two notes droning on for over an hour, it's a dynamic, tempo-shifting, and attention-grabbing album. If you like the likes of Caius, Uncle Acid and the Deadbeats, or even Alice in Chains, you're gonna find something to really appreciate about this album. Eight tracks, this is their third album, a little bit of a new lineup, but from everything I've heard, this is some of the best work the band has done to date, and if you like that style, I recommend this. Next up is Jordan Rudis with Permission to Fly. Jordan Rudis is back with, depending on how you look at it, his 19th solo album, and it's some of the most prog yet palatable music he has ever done. I feel this is an album for prog heads and non-prog heads alike. Eight of the nine tracks features a full-on band, and the final track is a very dreamy instrumental that feels like ending credits to the album. It's spacey, wanky in the right ways, but honestly, it kind of feels like if Haken did a Dream Theater album. And if that sounds intriguing to you, well, it's intriguing to me as well. And if you're looking for Jordan just to show off his chops, this won't be the album for you. But if you want to hear Jordan do some of his best songwriting and some of his best arrangements ever on a release, you need to check this one out. Next up, we have the band, and I hope I'm pronouncing this right, Otrere with Odyssey of Agony. This is a debut album from a German progressive doom band that automatically has my attention. I love progressive doom, and there's not enough bands doing it. It's a perfect blend of death doom with the right amount of prog chops and keyboards that you don't necessarily see coming if you're going into this blind. As much as I hear bands like The Peace Fell 3 on this, I also hear bands like Rapture or November's Doom on here. It's a little bit of a raw production style, but it's not unlistenable. It's just more raw than it is pristine. It has a great mid-90s feel behind it. It's cold, dark, embracing, and entrancing. The more I listen to it, the more I love it. And if you love Death Doom and you want to hear a little bit of prog mixed in just the right amount, this is an album you need in your life. 
Next up, we have Pure Reason Revolution with Coming Up to Consciousness. This is the band's sixth album in 18 years, including a sizable break in between all of that. They are back with their latest release, and the band continues to explore what the band can be. Of course, if you're looking for that alternative rock, indie rock, and electronic sound, that is here in spades. But they also get a bit heavier in the prog side as well, too. There's some moments on this album that feels like Steven Wilson did this for a Porcupine Tree or some of his early day solo work which I really appreciate. It's poppy and catchy, so much of this feels like it could fit on the dance floor, even though it has some very existential lyrics behind all of it, it's as bright as it is dark. It feels like a conundrum, but it works so very well, and this is what you want from the band. If you want to hear one of the most dynamic albums the band has ever put out, this is that album. Next up is Together to the Stars with a Fragile Silence, and I'm going to say it right now. This is the best post-black metal album of 2024 so far, and it's not even close. Between all three albums from this band, I have loved what they've done, but the previous two were one-man band affairs. This one sees the band become a full lineup, and it really gives it a bit of an extra oomph to the band. There's new inspirations, there's new influences, the post moments hit so much harder, the black metal moments are a little bit fewer and farther between but it is still very much a post-black metal album. Just a little bit more to it. For longtime post-black fans, you need to hear this one and see how it can be done in 2024. Once again, the easily the best post-black metal album of 2024. Unless something happens to come out in October or November, I can't imagine any album pulling this off the mantle. And finally today we have the debut album from Timeless Fairy Tale with a story to tell. This is a debut neoclassical power metal album, something you did not hear much of in 2024, but I'm so glad it's done because it is a fantastic genre. Featuring past and present members of Royal Haunt, Darkened, and Stamina, this is a debut album that has that traditional power metal, that neoclassical feel behind it, and it feels so sophisticated and engaging. If you like the styles of Advance, Galerius, and yes, even Yngwie Malmsteen, you're going to find something to really love and appreciate about this one. It's one of the most refreshing takes on the genre I've heard in a very long time, and with a genre that's very few and far between in 2024, if you like the genre, you need to give this a chance. You just may feel the same way. And there you go, folks, 15 brand new albums for Out Today and What I Missed for September 13th, 2024. And if you're keeping track, I've now hit 366 albums this year. Did I artificially inflate this list to make it 15 so I could hit that mark this week? Why yes. Yes I did. Now you have an album for every day of this calendar year. So, you know, go ahead and check out an album a day. Especially if you have that time machine. But seriously, thank you so much for tuning in. If you liked what you heard, didn't like what you heard, did I miss something, did you think it was all mad, do I have a bad taste in music, let me know in the comments section down below. And of course, like, comment, share, subscribe, all of that good stuff, you know what to do by now. And until next week, for September September 20th, 2024, for Out Today and What I Missed. For the Heavy Briefings YouTube channel, this is Josh Runquist saying, Embrace the Skullet.